This sound file contains the spoken version of a Wikipedia article on the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The material was recorded on September 6, 2015. Joint Chiefs of Staff from Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. The Joint Chiefs of Staff, JCS, is a body of senior uniformed leaders in the United States Department of Defense who advise the Secretary of Defense, the Homeland Security Council, the National Security Council, and the President of the United States on military matters. The composition of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is defined by statute and consists of the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, CJCS, Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, VCJCS, and the Military Service Chiefs from the Army, Navy, Air Force, the Marine Corps, and the Chief of the National Guard Bureau, all appointed by the President following Senate confirmation. Each of the individual Military Service Chiefs outside of their Joint Chiefs of Staff obligations, works directly for the Secretary of the Military Department concern, i.e. Secretary of the Army, Secretary of the Navy, and the Secretary of the Air Force. Following the Goldwater-Nichols Act in 1986, the Joint Chiefs of Staff do not have the operational command authority, neither individually nor collectively, as the chain of command goes from the President to the Secretary of Defense and from the Secretary of Defense to the commanders of the combatant commands. Goldwater Nichols also created the Office of Vice Chairman, and the Chairman is now designated as the Principal Military Advisor to the Secretary of Defense, the Homeland Security Council, the National Security Council, and to the President. The Joint Staff, JS, is a headquarters staff in the Pentagon, composed of personnel from each of the four Department of Defense Armed Services, that assists the Chairman and the Vice Chairman in discharging their responsibilities, and is managed by the Director of the Joint Staff, DJS who is a Lieutenant General, or Navy Vice Admiral. Section 1. Roles and Responsibilities After the 1986 reorganization of the military undertaken by the Goldwater-Nichols Act, the Joint Chiefs of Staff does not have operational command of U.S. military forces. Responsibility for conducting military operations goes from the President to the Secretary of Defense directly to the commanders of the Unified Combatant Commands, and thus bypasses the Joint Chiefs of Staff completely. Today, their primary responsibility is to ensure the personnel readiness, policy, planning, and training of their respective military services for the combatant commanders to utilize. The Joint Chiefs of Staff also act in a military advisory capacity for the President of the United States and the Secretary of Defense. In addition, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff acts as the Chief Military Advisor to the President and the Secretary of Defense. In the strictly advisory role, the Joint Chiefs constitute the second highest deliberative body for military policy, after the National Security Council, which includes the President and other officials besides the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs. While serving as Chairman or Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Chief of Staff of the Army, Chief of Naval Operations, Chief of Staff of the Air Force, Commandant of the Marine Corps, or Commandant of the Coast Guard, the salary is $20,263.50 a month regardless of cumulative years of service completed under Section 205 of Title 37, United States Code. Section 1.1. Current Members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Martin E. Dempsey, United States Army Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Paul J. Selva, United States Air Force Chief of Staff of the Army, General Mark A. Milley, United States Army Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Joseph F. Dunford, Jr., United States Marine Corps. Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Jonathan W. Greenert, United States Navy. Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General Mark A. Welsh III, United States Air Force. Chief of the National Guard Bureau, General Frank J. Grass, United States Army. Note. The Joint Chiefs do not include the Commandant of the Coast Guard, because the Coast Guard is normally under the Department of Homeland Security, whereas the other four branches are under the Department of Defense. However, the Coast Guard is always a military service, 14 United States Code, Section 1, and may operate under the Department of Navy during wartime. The Commandant of the Coast Guard is, however, occasionally invited by the Chairman to attend meetings of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Section 2. History. Joint Board 
As the military of the United States grew in size following the American Civil War, joint military action between the United States Army and the U.S. Navy became increasingly difficult. The Army and the Navy were unsupportive of each other, at either the planning or operational level, and were constrained by disagreements during the Spanish-American War in the Caribbean campaigns. The Joint Army and Navy Board was established in 1903 by President Theodore Roosevelt, comprising representatives from the military heads and chief planners of both the Navy's General Board and the Army's General Staff. The Joint Board, acting as a advisory committee, was created to plan joint operations and resolve problems of common rivalries between the two services. Yet, the Joint Board accomplished little as its charter gave it no authority to enforce its decisions. The Joint Board also lacked the ability to originate its own opinions and was thus limited to commenting only on the problems submitted to it by the Secretaries of War in the Navy. As a result, the Joint Board had little to no impact on the manner the United States conducted World War I. After World War I, in 1919, the two secretaries agreed to re-establish and revitalize the Joint Board. The mission of the General Staff was to develop plans for mobilization for the next war. The United States was always designated blue, and potential enemies were assigned various other colors. This time, the Joint Board's membership would include the Chiefs of Staff, their deputies, and the Chief of War Plans Division for the Army and Director of Plans Division for the Navy. Under the Joint Board would be a staff called the Joint Planning Committee to serve the Board. Along with new membership, the Joint Board could initiate recommendations on its own initiative. However, the Joint Board still did not possess the legal authority to enforce its decisions. Section 2.2 World War II Presidents of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt, and Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Winston Churchill, established the Combined Chiefs of Staff, CCS, during the 1942 Arcadia Conference. The CCS would serve as the supreme military body for strategic direction of the combined U.S.-British Empire war effort. The U.K. portion of the CCS would be composed of the British Chiefs of the Staff Committee, but the United States had no equivalent body. The Joint Board's lack of authority made it of little use to the CCS, although its 1935 publication, Joint Action of the Army and Navy, did give some guidance for the joint operations during World War II. The Joint Board had little influence during the war, and was ultimately disbanded in 1947. As a counterpart to the UK's Chief of Staff Committee in the CCS, and to provide better coordinated effort and coordinated staff work for America's military effort, Admiral William D. Leahy proposed a unified high command in what would come to be called the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Modeled on the British Chiefs, Chiefs of Staff Committee, the JCS's first formal meeting was held on 9th February 1942 to coordinate U.S. military operations between war and Navy departments. On 20th July 1942, Admiral Leahy became the Chief of Staff to the Commander-in-Chief of the Army and the Navy. Commander-in-Chief of the Army and the Navy of the United States is the military title of the U.S. President, per Article 2, Section 2 of the Constitution, with the Chiefs of Staff of the Services serving under his leadership. The first members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff were Admiral William D. Leahy, United States Navy, Chief of Staff to the Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy, and Special Presidential Military Advisor, General George C. Marshall, United States Army, Chief of Staff of the United States Army, Admiral Ernest J. King, United States Navy, Chief of Naval Operations, and Commander-in-Chief of the United States Fleet, General Hap H. Arnold, United States Army, Chief of the Army, Air Forces. As the table indicates, each of the members of the original Joint Chiefs was a four-star flag officer in his respective service branch. By the end of the war, however, each had been promoted, Leahy and King to Fleet Admiral, Marshall and Arnold to General of the Army. Arnold was later appointed to the grade of General of the Air Force. One of the Joint Chiefs of Staff's committee was the Joint Strategic Survey Committee, JSSC. The JSSC was an extraordinary JCS committee that existed from 1942 until 1947. It was, quote, one of the most influential planning agencies in the wartime armed forces. Members included Lieutenant General Stanley D. Embick, United States Army, Chairman, 1942. Vice Admiral Russell Wilson, United States Navy, 1942 to 1945. Vice Admiral Theodore Stark Wilkinson, United States Navy, 
1946, and Major General Moore S. Fairchild, United States Army Air Force, 1942. 2.3. National Security Act of 1947. With the end of World War II, the Joint Chiefs of Staff was officially established under the National Security Act of 1947. Per the National Security Act, the JCS consisted of a chairman, the Chief of Staff of the Army, the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, which was established as a separate service by the same act, the Chief of Naval Operations. The Commandant of the Marine Corps was to be consulted on matters concerning the Corps, but was not a regular member. General Lemuel C. Shepard, Jr., commandant in 1952 to 1955, was the first to sit in as an occasional member. The law was amended during the term of General Lewis H. Wilson, Jr., 1975 to 1979, making the commandant a full-time JCS member in parity with the other three DOD services. The position of vice chairman was created by the Goldwater-Nichols Act of 1986 to complement the CJCS as well as to delegate some of the chairman's responsibilities, particularly resource allocation, through the Joint Requirements Oversight Council, JROC. General Colin L. Powell, 1989 to 1993, was the first and, as of 2011, the only African American to serve on the Joint Chiefs of Staff. General Peter Pace, Vice Chairman 2001 to 2005, Chairman 2005 to 2007, was the first Marine to serve in either position. No woman has ever served on the Joint Chiefs of Staff. 2.4. National Defense Authorization Act of 2012. A provision in the 2012 National Defense Authorization Act added the Chief of the National Guard Bureau to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Guard historians called it the most significant development for the National Guard since the Militia Act of 1903. Section 3. Organization and Leadership Positions. 3.1. Chairman. The Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is, by law, the highest ranking military officer of the United States Armed Forces, and the principal military advisor to the President of the United States. He leads the meetings and coordinates the efforts of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, comprising the Chairman, the Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the Chiefs of Staff of the United States Army, and the United States Air Force the Chief of Naval Operations, and the Commandant of the United States Marine Corps. The Joint Chiefs of Staff have offices in the Pentagon. The Chairman outranks all respective heads of each service branch, but does not have command authority over them, their service branches, or the Unified Combatant Commands. All combatant commanders receive operational orders directly from the Secretary of Defense. The current Chairman is General Martin E. Dempsey, United States Army, who began his term on 1st October 2012. On 20th July 1942, Navy Fleet Admiral William D. Leahy became the Chief of Staff to the Commander in the Chief of the Army and Navy. 20th July 1942 to 21st March 1949. He was not technically the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Leahy's office was the precursor to the post of Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That post was established and first held by General of the Army Omar Bradley, in 1949. 3.2. Vice Chairman. The position of Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff was created by the Goldwater-Nichols Act of 1986. The Vice Chairman is a four-star general or admiral, and, by law, is the second highest ranking member of the United States Armed Forces, after the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. In the absence of the Chairman, the Vice Chairman presides over the meetings of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He may also perform such duties as the Chairman may prescribe. It was not until the National Defense Authorization Act in 1992 that the position was made a full voting member of the JCS. The current vice chairman is General Paul J. Selva, United States Air Force. 3.3. Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chairman. Command Sergeant Major William J. Gainley, United States Army, was selected to serve as the first senior enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, SEAC beginning 1st October 2005. It was to be a newly created position established to advise the chairman on all matters involving enlisted personnel in a joint environment. The senior enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is currently Sergeant Major Brian B. Battaglia, United States Marine Corps.
Battaglia was sworn in by Joint Chief Chairman General Martin Dempsey on 30th September 2011 in a ceremony at Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall, Virginia. The position had been vacant since CSM Ganey's retirement on 25th April 2008. As the SCA to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the SCAC is an advisor to the Chairman on all matters concerning joint and combined total force integration, utilization, and development. Additionally, the SEAC helps develop non-commissioned officers, NCOs, related joint professional education, enhance utilization of senior NCOs on joint battle staffs, and support the Chairman's responsibilities as directed. Section 4. The Joint Staff. The Joint Staff, JS, is a military headquarters staff based at the Pentagon, composed of personnel from all the four DOD services, assisting the Chairman and the Vice Chairman in discharging their responsibilities. They work closely with the Office of the Secretary of Defense, OSD, and the Military Department Staff, and the Combatant Command Staff. The Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is assisted by the Director of the Joint Staff, a three-star officer who assists the Chairman with the management of the Joint Staff, an organization composed of approximately equal numbers of officers contributed by the Army, the Navy, and Marine Corps, and the Air Force, who have been assigned to assist the Chairman in providing to the Secretary of Defense unified strategic direction, operation, integration of the combatant land, naval, and air forces. 4.1. Directorates of the Joint Staff The Joint Staff includes the following departments where all the planning, policies, intelligence, manpower, communications, and logistics functions are trans translated into action. Joint Staff Information Management Division, United States DOM, Directorate of Management J1, Personnel and Manpower J2, Intelligence J3, Operations The National Military Command Center, NMCC, is part of the J3 Directorate J4, Logistics J5, Strategic Plans and Policy J6, Command Control, Communications and Computers, Cyber the J-6 Directorate is one of a group of agencies that administers the SIPRNet. Other administrators include National Security Agency, Defense Intelligence Agency, and Defense Information Systems. The J-6 chairs the DOD's Military Communications Electronic Board, which works in conjunction with the Multinational Combined Communications Electronic Board. J-7, Operational Plans and Joint Force Development. J-8, Force Structure, Resources, and Assessment. 5. Joint Chiefs of Staff Civilian Awards The Joint Chiefs may recognize private citizens, organizations, or career civilian government employees for significant achievements provided to the joint community with one of the following decorations or awards. The CJCS Award for Distinguished Public Service DPS. CJCS Award for Outstanding Public Service OPS. CJCS Joint Distinguished Civilian Award CJCS, Joint Meritus Civilian Service Award, Joint Civilian Service Commendation Award, JCSCA, Joint Civilian Service Achievement Award, JCSAA. 6. Coast Guard. Although the Coast Guard is one of the five armed services of the United States, the commandant of the Coast Guard is not a member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He is, however, entitled to the same supplemental pay as the Joint Chiefs. Per 37 United States Code, Section 414, Subsection A, Clause 5, $4,000 per annum in 2009, and is accorded privilege of the floor under Senate Rule 23, Section 1, as a de facto JCS member during presidential addresses. In contrast to the Joint Chiefs, who are not in the military's operational chain of command, the Commandant of the Coast Guard commands his service. Coast Guard officers are legally eligible to be appointed as CJCS and VC. JCS, as per 10 United States Code 152 subsection A clause 1 and 154 subsection A clause 1, respectively, which use the collective term armed forces rather than listing the eligible services, but none has been appointed to either position as of 2014. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 unported license available at http colon forward slash forward slash creativecommons.org forward slash licenses forward slash by dash sa forward slash 3.0